Okay, students, we're going to start working on the recrystallization of the phenacetin. And so in my sand bath here, I have a three milliliters of ethyl acetate warming up. I will not add all three milliliters. I'm going to add it a milliliter at a time. And the goal is to get my uh, solid phenacetin here to dissolve in as little ethyl acetate as possible. And so let me go ahead and uh, use a flange here to measure one milliliter of hot ethyl acetate at a time. Once I get my solids dissolved, I will be transferring over to the Craig tube. The Craig tube kind of looks like a test tube, but it has a wider opening at the top than at the bottom. Okay, so starting with one milliliter of hot ethyl acetate. Swirl. I'm going to go in for a second milliliter. Now I will go ahead and transfer my very concentrated solid, solid here, well, solution, and move it on over to the Craig tube. So I'll use the funnel to ensure that I do not spill. And I'm going to add a half milliliter of ethyl acetate here in order to help transfer the rest of my crystals. So the total volume I have added of ethyl acetate so far is two and a half milliliters. And again, that was to ensure I transferred all of my solid from my drop Okay, so there is a small amount of solid left on the funnel, but that's just a little bit of product loss. Okay, so if you notice now my Craig tube has a good amount of volume. We have some solid down below. We're going to put this in the sand bath in order to get our solid to fully dissolve. Okay, um, I'm going to use a microphone to roll the sample back and forth. And in the meantime, we're going to also warm up some hexane. So I will take the sample up out of the heat, and if you notice here, my solid is mostly dissolved. I'm going to go ahead and just heat a little more, do a little more stirring. And again, for recrystallizing, the goal is to always add the minimum amount of solvent. To ensure a nice, concentrated solution. Uh, and so my next item up for did is to add a small amount of uh, hot hexanes and I will bring the sample up out of the sand bath in order to uh, show students the cloudiness that we should see in just a moment. So far that's been 15 drops. And if you notice here, we are getting some cloudiness at the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and continue to add just a few more drops of hexanes. Okay, so that has been a total of about 30 drops of hexanes. Okay, so if you notice here, we are seeing some nice crystallization occurring. We're going to go ahead and let this finish cooling to room temperature and then scrape uh, in order to induce more crystallization. Hi there, students. Okay, so uh, I have placed our sample in the ice bath so that it cooled to room temperature first. And if you notice, we do have some nice solid forming here towards the bottom of the Craig cube. Uh, using a glass rod, I'm going to go ahead and scratch along the edges of the glass and try to induce a little more crystallization. In order to do that, I need to, uh, you know, stabilize my glass. So I'm going to go in and an edge. And as I'm doing that, notice that I do get some more cloudiness to occur within the solution here. And when you are uh, recrystallizing, it is very important to ensure that you are actually scraping the glass. Okay, some students have a tendency to just insert the glass rod, assuming they are actually crystallizing. 
and that is not the case unless you're actually scraping the glass rod against the inner portion of the glass. Okay, so we are getting some more crystallization and I did notice that our solid at the bottom is compacting a little better. So I'm going to give it one more scratch and then we're going to let it set it aside for about five minutes. Okay, so after a, an extra five minutes of an ice bath, we, we have a nice solid amount of uh, crystal crystals forming at the bottom here. And we have a, a decently saturated solution up above. So we're going to assemble the Craig tube uh, so that it can go into a centrifuge. So I'm going to go ahead and place the plunger of the Craig tube on top. And make sure that it's ready to go. And the plunger needs. Uh, a piece of wire or string here for recovery. So we're going to go ahead and add that on like so. The dowel rod that went flying there was uh, just there to ensure that the loop stays in place. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and dry the outside of my quick tube just slightly so it's not flat. And the last item that we will need for centrifugation is an actual centrifuge tube. So our centrifuge tube is going to go on top kind of like a little hat, and the goal will be to merge the um, plunger here all the way to the bottom of the cone. Now that I've been able to do that, I'll go ahead and flip it over gently, okay, and notice that some of my liquid is uh, being, you know, stoppered here by the actual plunger. All right, my next goal is to get the mass of this system so that I can create a counterweight for my centerpiece. Alrighty, so our system, our Craig tube and centrifuge tube system is ready to go. So it had a mass of about 22.65 grams. Uh, we've created a, a counterweight for our system using a centrifuge tube of water and uh, you know, it as well weighs uh, 22.7 grams. So we're about 0.05 of a gram off from each other here. I'm going to make sure that these are exact opposite within the centrifuge so that they will balance each other. Okay, and lastly, we are going at a speed of 3,500 revolutions per minute for a total time of five minutes. Okay, our sample has finished spinning and if you take a look here, you will notice that we have uh, all of our mother liquor down below and trapped in this area. Let me see if I can get a good sight for my students here. We see all of the solid has been kept up above uh, courtesy of the plunger. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open this up over a pre-weighed wa pre watch glass so that we can determine how much pure solid we have created. So to separate the uh, plunger and, uh, well, the entire system from the centrifuge tube, we're going to use this string, and uh, that's actually the purpose of the string, to help you pull the system up, okay, and so uh, we need to keep these two pieces together so that our solid will not fall out, and place this right here on my trusty rack, and we always keep the mother liquor until the very end. Now I will open this piece up and my solid should be attaching to both the plunger and on the inside of the glass here. So I'm going to use a micro spatula to help me finish removing the extra little bit of solid. And so again, because the compound is a little bit staticky, we might see that uh, some of it will just not, uh, you know, unadhere from the you here. That's all right. We can use this little bit of solid that is left behind here for our ferric chlorine test, actually. So, so that'll be a good thing. Go ahead and place that down. Okay, now on my plunger, I have just a bit that needs to be scraped. So I'm going to go ahead and use the flat edge of my micro spatula here to scrape off what solid I have on the plunger. And if you notice, my, my solid is quite quite dry. 
Okay, so that's why we had to centrifuge it for a, a good amount of time. Okay, so I'm going to place this here. And now we will take the mass of the solid. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, so we do have about uh, 0.9 grams of product. Okay, so our mass here is 39.2208 grams. I'll have we zoom in here so that you can check the mass of the watch glass prior to any solid. So this is just the watch glass by itself. And then here we have the uh, watch glass plus our purified product. Okay, our next job will be to uh, take the melt point of our pure product and perform a ferric chloride test. Okay.